Well, essentially, Millie Alcock, a young Australian actress, has been cast as young Rhaenyra Targaryen. Older Rhaenyra Targaryen is being played by Emma D'Arcy. And we all have young Alicent Hightower. And this will be played by Emily Carey, who's a British actress. Older Alison Hightower will be played by Olivia Cook. This is now official. This is coming straight from HBO. The actresses themselves have also confirmed this on their own social media accounts. So this is real. They are playing these characters. They have been locked in. We will see them in season one. But how big their role is, what exactly they're up to, that we don't quite know yet. But Millie and Emily are now going to be respectively playing a Targaryen and a Hightower in House of the Dragon. Now, I want to preface, I am not a British citizen, so this may seem a little technical, but essentially because of British law, they really cannot do certain things with fictional characters. And this also happened with Game of Thrones. For instance, even though in the George R. Martin books that Daenerys Targaryen is very, very young and she's very sexually active for the show, again, it doesn't matter if the actress is much older, but fictionally, they cannot represent characters doing something below a certain age so because of british law and it's very clear what it is at a, the very least these two characters young alicent and young rhinaria will have to be 16. now whether this works with the canon of the books is irrelevant that's going to be something that you just have to work with because the thinking is that they're basically playing the younger versions about 10 years or so younger than what we see with Emma and with Olivia Cook as the older version. But does this really make sense with the timeline or with the canon? Unclear, but we know for a fact, because of British law, they have to be playing at a minimum 16 years old. So even though the actresses are respectively older than that, just again, by law, fictionally, the characters have to be portrayed at the very least as 16. They could be much older, but we're guessing that it's gonna be probably be you know fairly young. But it has to be like a minimum of 16. Again, if they're going to be engaged in sex or really gratuitous violence, and given this is a right it's a Game of Thrones show, we're going to have a lot of sex and we're going to have a lot of violence. So by law, they're going to have to be portrayed at least around 16, if not older. So we can safely say they're going to be in the first season. They're going to be in flashbacks. And again, presumably the Game of Thrones world, they're going to be doing things. And because of that, they have to be at least a minimum of 16. Does this jive with the books? Maybe, maybe not. They maybe have to make rework the timeline. And this is what I'm going to get into because this has not really been emphasized by the other people reporting this, but this is actually a very radical break from Game of Thrones because although it seems that they used flashbacks in Game of Thrones, if you weren't paying attention, technically speaking, they only really had one single flashback concerning Cersei, and that was it. They only had one real flashback within the entire series. So assuming what I think conventionally we all assume that the focus is going to be on the older versions, right, of with Emma and with Olivia playing Rhaenyra and Alicent in their rivalry, and they're going to go back in time, right, to look at them as younger selves. Well, what does this mean? Well, this is a really sharp break from Game of Thrones where flashbacks were almost never used. I know people think when Bran, we were able to see things in the past, that's technically not a flashback. We're just using his powers to look into the past. So that's not really a flashback as we understand it. Now, the writers for Game of Thrones, Benioff and Weiss, were not always strict about this. For instance, they did film The Mad King, you know, going crazy. They didn't release it, but you can look it up. They did film it, but they did not use it in the show. So they didn't always strictly abide by their own rule of no flashbacks. But again, taking their writing seriously, which again, I'm much more critical of them, but you would have to respect that one restriction. They really did not use the flashback all that much. I know you can kind of count Bran's visions as flashbacks, but really they're not. But here they're now opening the door of flashbacks. So a lot of the other sides have not emphasized this is pretty incredible because there is a good side and a bad side. The good side is pretty obvious. They can start pulling tons of characters, right? Like Aegon the Conqueror, fan favorites like Valeria and, and things like that. So even though the concentration and focus is going to be much further into the future or essentially like a hundred or so years before Game of Thrones, they're not bound by that restriction. They can move forward or backward in time as they please because, again, this has just not been done in Game of Thrones proper. So if you're looking for some fan favorites like Lannisters or Starks that we know of, 
they could technically use the actors we're familiar with or just hire younger versions and just skip ahead in a flash forward to Robert's Rebellion. Now, I don't think they're going to do that, but now they have the ability to do that. The downside, of course, is the ability to do that will probably create a lot of problems and issues with the canon because even in Game of Thrones, they were not, strictly speaking, consistent with their own timeline, right? Things happen that technically were impossible if we understood the timeline of events, but they did it anyway. But now that you've opened the door to flashbacks and flash forwards, right? Because logically now you can do both. Yes, you're going to have some ability to use to get cameos from fan favorites or to peer back into the past, even though technically you shouldn't and so on and so forth. You can just do that within the frame of the narrative. But the other side of it is you now have a much higher chance of making a lot of mistakes and contradicting yourself within your storyline. I don't think they're going to do anything crazy in the first season, but now that you've opened the door to the flashback, that is liable to be abused later on. A lot of good news for the respective actresses, and it'll be very interesting how they use the flashbacks, but I'm also here to be analytic, and we have this downside that, yes, you may be able to call in fan favorites, have intriguing younger or even older versions of characters we know about, but the downside is you may start contradicting your own story and just creating a lot of confusion within the canon. We're not even talking the books. We're talking about the story they're going to do within the Solid show. You're going to end up probably contradicting yourself. And there we are. This has been Gurman Throads Analyzed on casting updates with House of the Dragon. Thank you for listening.